Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you some solid evidence of ancient machining technology at Hoysaleswara temple. There is something very strange about these pillars. If you look closely, you can see these minute circular marks all around the pillar. These are created as a result of machining the pillar on a lathe. Uh, this process is called turning. There is no way to achieve this with chisels and hammers manually. If you look at these pillars, it is crystal clear that they were made with machines. In fact, archaeologists agree that these pillars were created in a lathe, but offer no convincing explanation as to how these huge pillars were machined 900 years ago. Nowadays, we are able to create these fascinating grooves and designs on a lathe, but machining a 12-foot tall stone pillar would be a very difficult job even today. So, how were these pillars created with amazing perfection in ancient times? Did ancient builders use machines and advanced tools just like what we use today? If this is true, is it possible that they also carved these machines or tools in this temple? Here you can see a very strange device in the hands of a god called Masana Bhairava. This clearly represents a type of gear mechanism called planetary gears. The outer gear has 32 teeth and the inner gear has exactly half the number or 16 teeth which is precisely how we use reduction gears today. If this were just an imaginary tool, how could the ancient sculptors come up with this gear ratio of 2 to 1? Even more interesting, we can also see a fastener that goes around this mechanism and is locked in the center. Today, we use the exact same technology. We use something called a circlip lock or a snap ring to keep these things in place. If historians are right, how could primitive people working with chisels and hammers imagine such a mechanism? Is it possible that advanced machining technology was used 900 years ago? Is this why we see such perfect pillars? What's more interesting is that this god is called Masana Bhairava which means God of Measurement. Is it a coincidence that the God of Measurement is holding an advanced tool? But the best evidence of machining is not on the outside of the temple. Let's go into the deep dark areas of the temple and see if we can find more evidence. Here is a seven foot tall God with the most uncanny ornaments. His crown is adorned with skulls which are less than one inch wide. I realized that I could pass a small twig through one eye and it would come out through the ear on the other side. The twig can also be passed from ear to ear and also ear to mouth and any way you want. What does that mean? It means that the entire skull is hollow inside it is impossible to remove the inside of a small sphere, which is only one inch wide. Even with modern machines, this would be very difficult, but we know for a fact that creating a hollow sphere inside of such a small rock is impossible with primitive tools. Even more interesting, we can shine a flashlight between his head and crown, and the light shines through. There is a very small gap between the head and the crown. I tried to slide the same twig, which is about 3 millimeters wide, but it would not go through. This means that the gap is less than 3 millimeters wide. How could anyone create a small gap less than 3 millimeters wide with chisels? Is it possible that the small skulls, crown, and other pieces were carved out of separate rocks and then fixed together. No, archaeologists confirm that this seven foot tall figure is made out of one solid rock. I've always wondered why 
the carvings in the darkest parts of the temple have the most intriguing details. Here's a woman who's wearing a large, thick necklace. However, if you shine a flashlight, we can see that this is not one necklace, but two, because the light passes between the two necklaces. Again, I tried to put the three millimeter wide twig and it won't go between these necklaces. How do we explain these extraordinary sculptures made 900 years ago? Now, the Hoysal Esra Temple is famous for housing the sixth and seventh largest monolithic bulls in India. However, in terms of beauty, they are ranked first and second. This is because they look like they have been created with machining precision. For example, look at the level of polishing. You can literally see your face like a mirror. And this is after 900 years of corrosion and damage. So you can imagine how perfect they would have looked at the time they were created. Is it possible that this kind of polishing was done with machines? Today, we use tools like the rotary burr for this level of polishing. If you look at modern day drilling and polishing tools, they look like this. Were tools like these also used in ancient times? And more importantly, are these tools also shown in the temple's carvings? Here we can see a tool that almost looks identical to the rotary burr in the hands of a deity. Here's another one that's holding a slightly different tool. Note that the devices look the same, but are not identical. The ridges are different. The drilling and polishing tools we use today also have different ridges for different types of outcome. Around the world, we can see gods holding this mysterious tool that is thought of as pine cones. Are these really pine cones? Is it possible that the gods in this Indian temple are also holding actual pine cones and not tools? Well, there are no pine trees in India, so how could the ancient builders in India have seen pine cones 900 years ago? Since that is not possible, is it possible that these gods shown around the world are holding an advanced tool that was used for machining technology? Is this how the world's greatest megalithic structures were built? Also, many of these quote-unquote pine cones shown around the world are depicted with a long base, just like any modern tool. In a previous video, I've also shown you a telescope carved in the same temple. How was this created without using machines? So, what do you think were advanced machines and tools used 900 years ago? If they were not used, how do you explain these turn marks and grooves, holes that are less than three millimeters wide and incredible polishing? What about these planetary gears and strange tools? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.